On June 2, thousands of activists protested in the Pisa region of Italy against the plan of the Mario Draghi government to build a military base in the village of Coltano. Protesters condemned the fact that resources were being spent for military purposes at a time when there was dire need for social expenditure and highlighted the fact that the Pisa region was already highly militarized. So why is the Draghi government planning yet another base in the region? What is the extent of militarization in the region? Maurizio Coppola of Potero al Popolo explains. So, uh, yeah, the demonstration was against the building and the announcement of the government to build a new military base in Coltano. It's near Pisa in the region of Tuscany. And uh, that's a region already highly militarized. Uh, we remember that there are four other military bases already in this region, and that should be the fifth one. We remember one of the, of the four military bases is uh, Camp Darby. It's a very well-known military base uh, in, in the region of Pisa, where uh, he, it was built in 1951 in an agreement between Italy and the United States after uh, the Second World War. And it is uh, today still one of the most important military base of the US in the European continent and the, in the Italian territory. So this um, military base announced uh, for Coltano, uh, it's in the middle of a green area, it should be like 74 hectares of land destroyed uh, for building this military base. And we remember 74 hectares are like 100 uh, football fields. So it's a huge, um, it's a huge territory, a huge area, a green area. It's a natural resource uh, that should be destroyed for this uh, military base. The second thing, it's also like the costs. Uh, it costs more or less, the government is presenting 190 million uh, euros for uh, this um, the building of this military base but of course we know that the costs are already always higher uh, we are calculating like at least 300 million uh, euro and the point is that the Italian government wants to take this money from the next generation EU COVID-19 uh, fund recover for a recovery fund so it is money that should go enter into uh, um, uh, the public um, healthcare sector that should help uh, social question to solve social question questions but in the context of this militarization of Europe of the Ukraine war uh, the government uh, declared that uh, it will take the money from from this fund uh, of course uh, the the main arguments are that uh, we need now in this time of uh, insecurity and of war we need a new military base that the military base in the region will also uh, open job opportunities and so on but what is hiding between this is uh, in this in these arguments is that this military base is already planned since years it's a project that is older than one year and so uh, it is not the context of insecurity produced by the war in ukraine that is pushing the government uh, to open a new military base but it's a longer project of militarization of the italian territory uh, and this is something that the uh, the people, uh, the people from the area, the uh, anti-imperialist movements, the anti-capitalist movements didn't accept. And so uh, on June uh, 2nd or June 2, there was a huge demonstration in the area where this military uh, base should be uh, built. And, uh, and it is very important that the people, that the popular pe the struggle is uh, um, starting now. There is also in the parliament an opposition. It is a little opposition. It's the group around Manifesta. It's the parliamentarian group in which also Potera al Popolo uh, is represented. And they also made an intervention in the parliament to stop this uh, crazy uh, project. In the aftermath of the Ukraine war, the Draghi-led government has doubled down on a policy of militarization. What has been the military policy of successive Italian governments and what kind of resources have they spent on this? Yeah, I mean, the, the militarization of Italy, it's something that is not new. But of course, the Ukraine war is accelerating the militarization. Then the Draghi government is uh, like moving on different levels. Uh, one of the first level, it's like the uh, we, we can summarize this intervention of Draghi uh, in, a, in a very uh, simple way. Uh, Draghi is reproducing the hard line promoted by Washington by uh, sending soldiers for the NATO missions in Eastern Europe and by uh, weaponizing uh, the, the conflict by sending weapons to Kiev. Uh, these are the two main uh, characteristics of the politics of uh, Mario Draghi uh, currently. And, uh, and the, the different levels are like, for example, in the first months of, of the conflict in the Ukraine, so uh, in the months of March, uh, more than 180 million uh, euro were spent 
to uh, reinforce the, uh, the missions of Italy uh, in, Eastern, uh, in Eastern Europe. We are speaking about NATO missions already existing before in uh, uh, Romania, in Latvia, but also in the Eastern Mediterranean Sea. And then there are like new soldiers sent uh, in these territories. We speak about 3,500 soldiers that in the next months should reach uh, these military missions organized by NATO, of course. And then there are also other uh, missions they are uh, uh, starting, they are developing, and it's uh, mi two missions above all in Bulgaria and in Hungary with uh, around 1,500 soldiers that should be sent there. And of course, there is the question of war, but of course, there is also like the militarization of the, of the uh, external border of Europe, so also like controlling all the migrant uh, flows coming from from uh, from eastern europe this is one one thing then the second thing it's the in general increase of military spending in italy uh, the government announced that they will reach two percent of gdp in military spending uh, in the next years of course they are like following the indications of uh, of the us and nato and uh, today in 2022 21 22 italy spent more or less 26 billion uh, euro for uh, the military but of course uh, this spending this increasing will like uh, affect a lot the budget of the Italian state, and we speak about 38 billion that should be reached in 2028. So there is an increase of at least 12 billion for the moment in a context that is really, I mean, it's absurd because we are having a huge discussion about the income support uh, working poor are getting or poor people are getting in Italy. And from left to right, the central left to, uh, to the far right, all of the parties are attacking poor people, uh, working poor, uh, uh, because they are getting some income support that is like at the total it's like 7 billion per year so like the military spending the increasing of the military military spending it's much higher of what poor people are getting and this is like a picture that represents really uh, what what is going on in, uh, in in Italy and what kind of politics the Draghi government is uh, conducting. We, we speak about income support that is really low at the moment. Italy does not have a minimum wage, a minimum wage. Uh, there is a campaign starting now in this context also from leftist organizations uh, and above all Potere al Popolo and the uh, uh, USB union uh, for asking a minimal wage, minimum wage of at least 10 uh, euros per, uh, per hour because there are still in Italy 5 million people earning less than 10,000 euro per year. So it is not possible and this is the main uh, point that uh, the Italian government is now militarizing a conflict uh, putting like uh, creating uh, uh, insecurity in uh, in Europe but also in Italy uh, increasing military spending and on the other uh, uh, side of the society like criminalizing uh, poor people uh, putting pressure even more on on workers on working poor and in this context i mean in the first days of the announcement also of the war and of the involvement of Italy in this war, because Italy is totally involved by sending heavy weapons and missile systems to, to Kiev, uh, the arm producers, the stock prices skyrocketed. So Leonardo, one of the main uh, company producing arms in Italy, in, the, in, in a couple of days, their stock prices doubled. So uh, war uh, is not affecting everyone in the same way. Poor people, working poor, working people are getting uh, under pressure, they, they are criminalized and so on. And on the other side, there are companies, the big capital of the, of the, of the arm producers, uh, uh, their stock prices and their profits skyrocketing. Italy has also been an integral part of NATO for decades and has played a key role in the expansion of the alliance. What has been Italy's role in NATO? Yeah, I mean, Italy historically has a very uh, fundamental role uh, in the military alliance uh, in the North Atlantic uh, uh, Treaty because, uh, because of the geography. I mean, Italy is in the middle of, uh, of the Mediterranean Sea, uh, a Mediterranean Sea that is highly uh, um, uh, militarized. And uh, still today, we have military exercises organized and under control of, of the NATO going on uh, in Sardinia, in the island, in the western part of, of Italy. Uh, the, the beaches were closed for, uh, for several weeks because there are military exercises organized by NATO with the full involvement of Italy, France and the St United States. At the same time, in Sigonella, in Sicily, it's the island in the south uh, of Italy, near the uh, Maghreb coast, uh, intelligence operations drones are starting from Sigonella. It's a military base 
uh, uh, from Italy, but in which also uh, US aviation is hosted and uh, from which uh, NATO operations are, are organized. So Italy has military bases used by um, the US and by NATO forces. They are now, uh, they are now used also for the intervention, interventions for supporting the, 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 the military forces from Kiev against, against Russia and so on. So Italy has a central role in, um, in, in the NATO alliance in the Mediterranean Sea, but without a proper and without a known a strategic orientation militarily and for uh, for the security of Europe. Italy, the Draghi government above all, is just following and is uh, submitted to what uh, the US and what Biden is dictating and it's what, what the US uh, is, is, uh, is oriented and uh, yeah, developing in this Ukraine war. So uh, this is a huge problem and this is a huge problem that politically is also like uh, coming up in Italy because on June 21, Mario Draghi will speak in the parliament for uh, again uh, relaunching a new finance, financing for, uh, for uh, weapons to Ukraine. And uh, there are already parties saying it is enough. There is like absolutely the right also supported by, uh, by Putin uh, in history, like uh, Matteo Salvini uh, um, is saying we have to stop the sending of, of, of uh, arms uh, to Kiev. There are also other uh, parties like the Five Star Movement asking for a much a much stronger uh, diplomatic intervention of Italy. Uh, and now, like, the, there is the Democratic Party supported by the far right of the Brothers of Italy that will uh, get a majority in the parliament and probably Italy will uh, decide again a new financiation of, uh, of the military intervention of Italy in, in the Ukraine war. So this is more or less the situation. And of course, the popular movements are uh, taking to the streets uh, regularly, uh, and there is a very important uh, political construction also that we have to face because today speaking about peace, it's something very, uh, very complicated because all the parties in the parliament supporting the Draghi government, supporting the militarization of the conflict in Ukraine, are presenting themselves as peace parties, and uh, it is very important that popular forces, that leftist organizations and parties uh, put content in this uh, category of peace. And uh, this is the reason why we have to combine uh, every day the reivindication for peace also with the reivindication and the demands for social justice, because there is no peace without social justice.